what's up YouTube today I thought I would take some time and go over some diet hacks to help you guys with your dieting your cutting phase whatever you want to call it I thought I would give you my top 10 diet hacks so if you guys are dieting you're obviously trying to lose body fat uh, but let me tell you something that I wish I would have known in the past and that is that hunger is completely okay. Hunger is, it's a thing when you diet. And I used to think that if I was hungry, I was going to ruin my metabolism forever. Um, my muscle's gonna start eating itself and all of these myths that, you know, I truly believed in in the past. But I've grown to learn that hunger is a side effect of trying to lose that body fat. <gasps> so we know. Before I start this video, I want to make sure that you guys are following me on Instagram at Teche for more nutrition tips and fitness tips and motivation and fitness videos, all that good stuff, as well as subscribing to my channel right here, the red button. I know some of you guys have been unsubscribed because it's a YouTube glitch. So be sure you are subscribed and hit the little notification bell on the side to make sure that you are the first ones to receive a new video. I wrote all of these little dieting hacks down in my notes on my phone and it was really hard to only do 10 of them because I have like tons of tricks, but I knew that the video would be way too long, so I only did 10. Here we go. I'm gonna say the number one thing that people actually don't know and what I used to not know was the fact that once you eat, your insulin levels raise. So once those are raised, you don't kinda, you don't get that feeling of feeling full. So right after a meal, I know you guys have felt this before, you're still hungry, you still wanna eat, you're not satisfied, and so you break and you continue to eat more. So what I would recommend you to do is to step away from the kitchen, bring you know your glass of water or flavored water, whatever you like to drink, step away from the kitchen and truly allow your insulin levels to come back down and to help yourself feel full because chances are you are gonna feel satisfied, you just need some time. So what I recommend you to do is step away, maybe put in a piece of gum. It's not always best to rely on gum 24 seven, but in a situation where you're still extremely hungry, go ahead and step away, you know, keep busy. If you have anything to work on on your laptop or watch a show or hang out with friends and family, do that at that moment and then reassess if you're still hungry. Chances are you still may be hungry, but your macros are about to be done for the day. So stay strong during this process and let's get your insulin levels back to normal. All right, my number two diet hack is to be fully present while you're eating your meal. So I know probably all of us sit there and scroll on our phone, we're watching YouTube, we're watching the TV, but if we just take some time and truly focus on slowing down, eating, chewing your food, and allowing yourself to enjoy that meal right in front of you, you're going to feel a lot more satisfied than shoveling the food in while you're looking down at your phone or looking at the TV. You're going to eat very fast because you're probably hungry and you're not going to fully enjoy that meal. So more than likely you're not gonna be as satiated as if you were to slow down and eat the meal in peace. Number three is going to be drink lots of water. I know everyone probably sounds like a broken record when we say this, but drinking water is so, so, so important for your body, for many health reasons, to keep you full, uh, to help digestion, to help energy. It's just going to help your di the diet process a ton for so many different reasons and I can go on to a whole video on why you should drink water but at least drink a gallon to a gallon and a half if you have to purchase a gallon uh, a gallon water bottle or like a quarter gallon water bottle you want to try and track your water because if you're weighing in you want to make sure that your weigh-ins are as consistent as possible so that you know which way you're going on the scale um, if you have a day where you don't drink a lot of water, you may actually hold water. So, drinking enough water 
consistently is going to help the diet process. My fourth dieting hack is going to be to space your meals out. So I know a lot of people like to eat three or four times a day. I know a lot of people like to eat seven times a day. Pick a method and stick to it. Uh, that way your body kind of knows when to eat and feels satisfied and it's not always guessing when you're gonna eat. Um, it also helps if you have a steady flow of protein throughout the day. So if you take your grams of protein, if you're tracking macros, if you're taking your grams of protein, divide that by however many meals you're having that day and go ahead and have a consistent, you know, say 25 grams of protein, 25 grams of protein, 20, have that consistently so that you will feel satiated and you'll feel full as well as allowing protein synthesis to occur uh, throughout the entire day. Along with this too, try not to eat all your calories in the morning um, because then you're left scrambling the rest of the day trying to eat a bunch of low volume foods. So I would recommend eating, you know, a protein and a fat in the morning and then, which will keep you full for a while and then eating more meals, more of your bigger meals later in the day because I don't know about you guys, but for me personally at night, it's super hard for me to stay on point with my macros and my diet because at night I feel like I could just eat anything and everything. I don't know what that is. Um, I don't know if you guys have that too. I'm pretty sure you do because it's a very common thing. So I would recommend even placing a meal right before bedtime. It's not going to make you gain fat. A lot of people think that if you eat past 6 p.m. you're going to gain fat and that's not true at all. Um, yes, for people with slower metabolisms, if they eat a huge meal before bed, that's probably not the best idea. But if you have a snack, like a high protein snack, or even some oatmeal right before bed, um, a small snack like that, that's not going to hurt you at all. And it's going to help you look forward to that meal. So kind of save, I would say your favorite meal until the last meal of the day. It keeps you going throughout the day. You have something to look forward to and your life doesn't suck as much. You know. It just is the best meal that you're looking forward to throughout the whole day and it doesn't make dieting feel as hard. My fifth dieting tip is going to be to keep busy. Keep as busy as you can. Uh, take up a new project, take up a new hobby, uh, go for a walk, go out with friends and have coffee. Do what you can to keep busy because if you sit here on your couch and you think about how freaking hungry you are and how much you really want to go in the pantry and eat your nuts and more, it, this, this whole dieting phase is going to suck for you. I'm telling you straight up. You need to keep busy because you need to keep your mind off of feeling hungry. So I know, I know when I'm out and about throughout the day, I'm not thinking about my hunger. I'm not worried about what meal is coming next. I'm worried about what I'm doing out there. Rather than if you were to sit here and just stew on how hungry you are, it's not going to be very good and you're more likely to binge. So my advice to you is to keep as busy as you can and you know take this time where you normally would maybe sit in front of the TV and watch a TV show. Maybe keep busy on your laptop and start a new project or something along those lines that's going to keep your brain as busy as possible. Tip number six is don't go balls to the wall hard with your diet and with your cardio because if you're losing weight and you are taking in a certain amount of calories and you're doing a certain amount of cardio and you're still losing weight, stay on that protocol that you're doing. Don't change anything. There's no reason to because if you just keep changing things and keep going lower and lower, there's really no reason to do that if you are losing weight. So if you aren't losing weight, you can go ahead and drop your calories a little bit, do a little bit more cardio, but that is a huge piece of, piece of advice I can give you guys. Don't second guess yourself because what you're doing is working. All right, number seven is going to be to lower stress. I know we live in a world that is like, we always feel the need to do everything. So you sit here and you feel like you have to do something and you, you go to the store and you feel like you have to be on your phone constantly as well as pick up your groceries. I mean, we live in a world that we just cannot relax and can't chill and that causes stress. So I know there's a lot of other stressors in life, but if you can control the things that you can control, it's going to make your dieting phase a lot easier because as females, especially when cortisol raises, 
you're gonna hold fat in your belly region. That's just a, that's just how it, how it is. And also, I have learned that the hunger hormone, or the hormone that keeps you full, leptin, it's going to be hard for your body to realize those signals if you're always stressed. So you can keep eating and keep eating and not really realize you're full because your leptin, your body isn't realizing those leptin levels. So try and reduce stress as much as you can. Do some meditation, get a deep tissue massage, take a bath, read, go on a long walk, whatever the case may be try and relieve as much stress as possible. Okay, number eight, this isn't really a diet hack, but it's something that will relate to every single one of you guys. So let's say you are on the same amount of macros and you're doing the same amount of cardio and you know, you're know you going pretty hard. You're not eating very much and you're doing a lot of cardio and you're killing your training sessions as much as you can you still don't see the scale drop. There's a couple ways you can go. One, yes, you need to keep dropping your calories. If you haven't reverse dieted before and your metabolism is not as efficient as you would like it to be, you need to drop your calories. As bad as that sounds, you need to in order to see any movement on the scale. Um, and that honestly could be 900 calories. So you then need to decide, is it worth me not having energy, me feeling like crap, me being moody to lose this weight? Or do I wanna go the other way and start a reverse diet, work on my metabolism, start feeling like an athlete again? So those are the two ways you can go if you aren't seeing movement on the scale and you're literally doing everything you, you think possible. I know a lot of people get there, so that is my advice to you. You can either work on your metabolism or you can keep going hard for another month and dropping your calories and increasing your cardio and see where that gets you. My ninth diet hack slash diet advice I would give to you guys is you need to love your meals that you're eating. There is no reason why you should be eating, you know, kale and tilapia for every single meal if you hate kale and tilapia. There's absolutely no reason to do that. You can choose foods that you love to eat. Uh, nutrient dense is going to give you a lot more bang for your buck. I will get there soon. But you can choose foods that you love and that you look forward to eating. If you don't like any of the meals you're eating for your diet, you're going to be so cranky and you're gonna hate life. So there's no reason why you should eat something that you don't want to eat. You need to make sure that you love your meals. Right now, I'm dieting. I love all my meals. I look forward to every single one of my meals. And that's how it should be. That's what's going to help you sustain this for a little bit longer than if you were to hate all your meals. All right, number 10, I kind of just talked about this. Uh, if you're flexible dieting, you really need to be aware of making your meals more voluminous. So for, so you need to think of your macros as like a budget. So yes, you can eat a Pop-Tart, which is this big and this thin, and is it gonna fill you up? I don't know, probably not. Or you can eat you know, this huge bowl of rice and turkey and green beans and oil and all of this that's going to help you feel full and give you energy rather than eating the Pop-Tart. So yes, flexible dieting is awesome. And if you really do want that Pop-Tart, please eat it and fit it in your macros. But you need to think in terms of volume because you do not want to be hungry. You do not want to eat all these processed foods that are going to leave you feeling hungry rather than eating these nutrient dense foods where you can get a lot of bang for your buck. All right, those are my dieting hacks for you all. And I hope that they've helped some of you guys who are dieting right now. Let me know what you want to see next. Um, if you haven't checked out my series that's going on right now, it's called Shred. It is for my journey to the stage. It's going to be my fifth NPC competition and it is in June. I'm doing it alongside my fiance, so it's been very, very fun. And if you're not following that series, please follow it because you will like it. And if you're trying to gain motivation, for living an active and healthy lifestyle. If, you, if you're interested in seeing how people get ready for the stage, it's definitely a series 
for you guys. That's all I have for you today. Please let me know what you want to see next. I'm hoping to have a vlog out here very soon. I'm going to tell you guys all that's been going on in my world in terms of all the crazy wedding planning that I've been having to deal with this past week. So it's been crazy, but I'm getting ready to pick back up on vlogging. So hope you guys are ready too. I will see you then and thank you for watching.